Hi, in this video, you're going to learn all about how to create confirmation pop-up screens inside your Power Apps application. So stay tuned. So you've built an application that has a really critical point path. Perhaps you want to delete a record or you want to confirm before somebody sends an email to the entire company. Well, this common application technique of, of popping up a confirmation saying, are you sure you want to do this action, is what we're going to cover in this short video. So let's go back to our application that was a Salesforce application where we were uh, searching for an account. Once we found the account, we show a list of, of, of users in that account, and then we give you a map. This is from our last uh, two or three videos we've been doing. So what I want to produce today is a delete box and before somebody deletes that user, I want to make sure I confirm, are you sure you want to do that? So first of all, I'm going to go inside this, uh, this gallery. Uh, I'll go ahead and pick an item, hit the little pencil icon, pick an item. Uh, I'll pick a separator, for example. And then inside the icons, I'll pick a trash can. The only reason I'm, I'm inside the gallery is to make sure that I should see this trash can three times in my instance to show that, it's actually re that I'm inside the repeater, not outside the, the gallery. So with that now done, let's go ahead and not wire it up quite yet, but let's go ahead and create our, um, let's go ahead and delete this guy here. Uh, let's go ahead and, and create our instance. Oops, I'm gonna do that for the time being. We'll come back to the delete later. Uh, let's go ahead now and create our little pop-up that's going to happen from that. So to do that, uh, it's a little bit of a workaround inside of Power Apps. It's not no direct um, screen you can pop up or some temporary thing. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, tr a shape on top of our screen, uh, give it a kind of a translucent look, put our question on there, you sure you want to delete this, yes, no, and then uh, hide it and show it based on certain kind of actions that have been created. So to do that, let's go inside and create our shape first under the icons area. You'll find these icons all the way at the very bottom. We'll find our rectangle there. All right, we'll go ahead and occupy the entire space and you'll see under the main properties, a fill color of some sort. So let's, let's go for a nice light color, like a light bluish color. And then you'll notice when I go to the advanced properties, or I can also see it under fill right here, but the advanced properties down below that we're using 241, 244, you know, whatever that is right there. That one is what I want to bring your attention to. That one represents how translucent is this, or how much how much transparency is there. 100% in this case, one means you cannot see through it. But if I do like a 0.5, we'll be able to see through it 50%. Uh, so 0.5 is a little too too little. Maybe 0.7 or 0.8 is probably the right answer. Let's go. Let's try 0.8. Yeah, that looks about right. So you can still see what's going on inside the application, um, but you can tell that, hey, we're overriding the application to, to make you do something. Now, uh, we'll do a quick label. Okay, and we'll say something as simple as, are, are you sure you want to delete? And then I will pick the whatever user they collected. In that case, it is a gallery. It's gallery, browse, browse contacts, Dot selected dot name. So are you sure you want to delete preview user in my example here? Uh, let's put that into a little more obvious spot. There we go. To where they obviously have to have to answer a question now. Uh, let's also make that nice and bright text. Oh, nice and bright text. Go to home and let's bold that. Make it nice and red so you can't miss it. And let's make it nice and bold. And let's also increase the size of the font. So we really are jumping out at the user here. Hey, you got you got to answer something inside of this. Okay. So now with that done, uh, oh, I also need a question mark. That my my grammar uh, is going to kill me here. My wife, who's an English major at one point. All right, there we go. And we'll stop there. Are you sure you want to delete portal preview user? Now we need two buttons, a yes and a no. So let's go ahead and create those real quick. Just a quick uh, button for yes and a quick button for no. There we go. Now we're also going to label these because it becomes a little difficult to find uh, what button is doing what. So I'll just kind of call this BTN yes and BTN no. I should, of course, have better names, but uh, no. All right, so let's say this guy here is going to be the answer of yes. This guy here is going to be the answer of no. This won't be the prettiest uh, pop-up screen ever, but uh, uh, I'll, actually, instead of saying no, I'll, I'll say cancel. So it's very obvious what we're doing when you hit the cancel button. Okay, now with that done, if you say yes, 
uh, I want to, of course, remove the record. So I'm going to wire this up at this point to actually remove the record. So the on select event here is going to be a removal, not the trash can. The trash can is going to hot open up this pop-up window, and the, the cancel is going to disguise it. So for the cancel button, let's just go ahead and wire this one up first here. So the cancel button, let's go ahead and create a new variable, and we'll go ahead and do update context. Now by doing update context, it's going to be a contextual variable, variable meaning it's only available on this screen only. It's not a global variable which is set with a set command. The update context means it's only available for this screen, so we can kind of have more of them and kind of play along here. And the way you set these is a little different also. So the update context, if I say variable uh, show pop-up, then I do a colon here to set that one. So I'll say uh, false, which is going to hide it. And then uh, I'm going to use that same one over here for the yes, right? So after I after I say yes, I'm going to hide that variable, hide the pop-up screen, and do the delete. So let's go ahead and do our delete next. So okay, you may remember some past ones. It's a remove. We then specify what we want to remove. We're going to remove a contact. Oh, and my IntelliSense is not kicking in because I don't have the, there we go, contacts, I think. There it is. And then what contact do you want to remove? Well, in my case, you notice up top here, it's telling me what, what I need to do. We're used to doing the, this item inside of a gallery. So in here, we're going to point to what item inside the gallery we want to remove. So as you remember, we'll have that gallery called Gallery Browse Contacts. There it is. Uh, dot selected. Close parenthesis. And there we go. So now it's going to remove the contact and then also, show, then also uh, uh, hide, hide the screen as soon as it's done with that. We can also go through and have a little spinner or something like that showing it's actually doing work before it does that as well. So there's lots of things we can do. And we have a whole video on spinners in our, like, I think last week we did that also. Okay, now to trigger this, let's go ahead and make all these items here kind of grouped together. So I held down the control key while I selected all four or five items here. And then you'll notice right here. So they have four items selected. And when I go to home, I'm going to specify that I want to group these together. And I'll call this group pop-up. So everything underneath there, I want to hide and I want to show based on certain variables. And keep in mind we have that variable called var pop-up, show pop-up, or whatever that was called before. So the visibility of this pop-up, if I go to on visible, the visibility right now is at the true. So instead of doing that, we're going to set the visibility to be equal to whatever the variable is set to. And so that way we're not going to have to say if then statements. We're just going to go ahead and say the visibility is going to be equal to whatever that variable is set. We'll set it with the, direct, with the, with the delete key and then we'll create it again when we uh, will hide it again inside those yes and no fields. So in our case, we have that variable. There show pop up right there. So it immediately hides because our default value in our case for that pop up of that variable is false. Now, to do this, I'm going to select my, my little trash can. I'm going to leave the select parent, and I'm going to say a semicolon after it. I want that update context. Keep in mind, it's going to update our contextual variable. And it's going to be var show pop-up. <clears throat> there we go. It's going to be true now. There we go. So now, when I select this drop-down box, let me go ahead and play this real quick. See how easy this is? So when I select this, Again, we'll, we'll pick on a, a user we want to remove. Uh, how about we pick somebody at the bottom here, uh, like Matt Martin. Hit the hit delete key. Are you sure you want to delete them? Notice nothing else. I can't click on anything else right now. I can't scroll this. I have complete focus on the application. If I hit cancel, it goes right back. Matt Martin is still there. If I hit delete key again, hit yes, it's going to remove it. And then Matt Martin, after a few seconds, this for a spinner would be really useful, wouldn't it? And a few seconds, it's going to refresh, and Matt Martin is now gone. Again, just to reinforce how, how we did the spinner before, we could put spinners with, uh, again, that same variable to show it and hide it again with the same variable, ultimately, right? Or sorry, a different variable to show it and then hide it uh, on demand. So this is how we can kind of create a, a fairly attractive looking, um, uh, attractive looking delete option here. We can go through, cancel and delete, and we can use that for you know, big emails or big uh, deletes uh, as we go through these. All right, well, I uh, uh, hope you enjoyed this presentation on how to create your own pop-ups inside of Power Apps. As you can see, it's a very simple process. I'm just creating a triangle, or creating a, a, a rectangle, excuse me, uh, kind of making it a little bit translucent, a little transparent, and then having variables show or hide that after you group it together. 
Uh, this is all part of our training classes. You can get the information for that down below. And we also love to build applications for you. So if you go to our website at pragmaticworks.com, we can also build an application for you there as well. Tomorrow's app, we'll be doing some translation services around, around uh, translating this to Spanish or English or whatever language you want to as well. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a great day. Goodbye. Thank you.